What is up, everybody? Welcome into Saturday with Smoltz, where every single Saturday, the Hall of Famer and legend himself, John Smoltz, joins me to talk everything happening in baseball and a little bit about his life. And today, he talks about his travel up to New York for the Astros Yankees season and how wild that was. But we also talk a lot about the trade deadline, the Mets and what they did and the Scherzer and Justin situation going out the door and how surprised he was by that. The Atlanta Braves, did they do enough in his opinion? As well as the Angels deciding to keep Otani in their playoff push. We got the Yankees, what they did or didn't do, which was a complete head scratcher at the deadline and what he thinks about all that and some of the other teams around the league who he thinks had a good trade deadline. So this one is going to be a lot of fun. Without further ado, let's welcome in Hall of Famer John Smoltz. game what a moment all right and it is time to welcome him in now here's the hall of famer john smoltz john thank you for joining me my friend you just got to new york how was your travel i know we, we talked about you were, you were hurt you just had surgery so how was your travel day yeah you know this could be my first interesting one where i got to through the airport or at least i thought i'd get through the airport no problem walking's not a problem that movement's yeah. great Sitting, that's an issue, sitting too long. So, of course, that was going to be uh, an interesting flight. But I got to the uh, the airport and uh, would have no reason to think differently, but had a random ID check, you know, go through. Um, I have clear. I yeah. usually go right through. And, of course, I went into my wallet and then uh, there's no ID there. <laughs> so that's a problem. And the ID was because I had two uh, surgery two weeks ago and they just asked you to bring an ID and a baggie. So my wife has my <laughs> ID and then I had to navigate like all different things I had to do to get through, which I get, I understand why that's in place. Um, searching for my, my badge, my MLB network badge, uh, <laughs> credit card, looking for everything I could. And then ultimately I had to go to the other side of the airport to go through security um uh, but all is good i was the last one on the plane made it and uh you know life well, lessons at least you made it john it has been a wild week in baseball with the trade deadline what was thought to maybe not be the craziest trade deadline in the world ended up being i think a lot crazier than a lot of people thought let's start with the mets did you expect to see what the mets ended up doing max scherzer and justin both out the door and on their way to texas no, I really didn't. Um, I, I can, you know, you could have this chew it up and have this discussion and try to make points for either way, either case, but I didn't see it coming. I think the reason where we saw more movement than we thought was because there were some pretty darn good teams selling that I never thought would be selling. You're always trying to cherry pick those teams that have players that are holding over till they get good. Never did I see an opportunity where the Mets and the Cardinals and and just teams that you just historically think are going to be in the mix. And the amount that was invested for the New York Mets, still to me trying to digest the fact that, okay, maybe it's just that one bad funky year. Let's go at it again next year with the guys we already have. But they chose to go in another direction, paid a lot for the prospects. And hopefully for the Mets, somehow those prospects deliver because there's going to be a lot of eyes on them to see how they do given the fact that that has a price attached, right? Yeah. You're not just giving away really, really good players, but you're buying those players' contracts because you really were at the risk of, of not getting as much as you would normally get because yeah. it's like a fire sale. Yep. Let's stick in that same division, your former, former team, John, the, the Braves. Do you think the Atlanta Braves did enough. In my opinion, they're the best team in baseball right now. They didn't go out and add a ton, added a, a reliever, which is a nice piece. Uh, but ultimately, they had more of a quiet deadline. Do you think the Braves did enough? Yeah, I always think it's a tough position for teams in the American League, Baltimore, best record, Braves, best record. You're there for a reason. Every team has a tweak they could have and always could enjoy a boost. 
But I don't think the teams with the best record have the most strength to deal with, meaning you you know that you're a really good team, um, but how much do you really sacrifice to get somebody that if you don't get anybody, you, you're still a really, really good team? Yeah. So I always feel like the best record teams have that curse on them because their fan base are like, now's our time, especially more Baltimore than the Atlanta Braves because Baltimore hasn't been there in a while and they certainly could use a lot. They did make a huge move in, in getting Jack Flaherty, but they didn't do a ton because they're so young. But the Atlanta Braves, look, I mean, the bullpen piece is nice. Um, if they get their two starters back, though, that's going to be like adding. I mean, yep. Max Fried's been out a long time, and Kyle Wright's been out a long time. And hopefully they're back in the road to recovery because if they can get in and get five starts and feel like, okay, that's what they need moving into the postseason, wow, what a rotation that is. You know, anchored by Spencer Strider. But the unknown is, you know, you always want depth and maybe teams, you know, hopefully they don't get hurt. Nobody yeah. gets hurt. But that will change the dynamics, of course, for sure. We've spoken a lot over the last few weeks about the the Angels and what they're going to do, what they should do with Shohei. But, you know, John, what we have to say doesn't matter because in the end it all comes down to Artie Marino and the GM out there. And they decided to keep Shohei, and they went for it. And I, I respect the fact that they made the decision and they went all in and they went for it. Whether it was the right one or not, time will tell. But what do you think about the Angels' decision to keep him and go for it? Well, this is going to be the most talked about after the fact, you know, it's, it's look, we're, we're forecasting what we thought and opinions are going to be widespread on this. Uh, we don't have the checkbook or the uh, decisions <laughs> to make that this call, but, but I think if I look at it one way, we're going all in to prove to Shohei that we can win. And maybe that helps attract him to stay here. Yeah. Maybe there's a chance to re-sign him. Because the, the, the feeling is out there that they're not going to resign him. So what did this moves or these moves do um, other than possibly get them into the playoffs? So I have to think that it's pretty, it would be pretty impressive to say if I'm trying to show Shohei Otani that we care and that we can put a winning product on the, on the field. Because it, I really think he only cares about playing in the postseason. I really do. I, I think he wants to win. He's made that very known. And if you're going to re-sign a guy, it would have already happened. So maybe this is a this is a last ploy. Because what's going to happen is if they don't make the playoffs, you're going to have all the experts say, I told you so. Right? Yeah. I mean, this this wasn't going to work. And if they don't re-sign him, then you're going to have more experts say, I told yeah. you so. So uh, looking at uh, uh, this uh, crystal ball that we don't have. I I, I kind of derived the conclusion that they looked at the Yankees. They thought they were better than the Yankees. They looked at a couple teams in front of them. If they added these pieces, they could possibly be better than those teams. And maybe that's the push. Well, you're up there in New York now for Astros Yankees series to call that. And Let's talk Yankees. John, what the hell were they doing at the deadline? Were they buyers? Were they going to be sellers? Well, the answer turned out to be neither, really. Yeah, they were really stuck in neutral. Um, they couldn't, I don't think they could afford to be sellers in this market, not this close to the playoffs. I think they feel, and I feel the same way, their pitching is way good enough. I mean, they got arms that probably could have gotten some pretty good return if they didn't think they were – if they were eight games out, this would have been a different story. But they just got to find offense. And they feel like maybe they can get their offense with a healthy judge, even though he's not totally healthy. You saw some things last night that made you feel like maybe the toe's a little sore. you yeah. got to believe it is. And he's gotten through it. He's going to have to have surgery. But if you get a Stanton three-run homer every once in a while, you get LeMayu hitting again. Um, you get individual – performances a little bit better than if they're just average they've got a great chance to be a thorn in everyone's side in the postseason just average like three run average you know just score three yeah uh but we haven't seen that consistency it's why they've not really reeled off any kind of lengthy streak they're in the midst of a really tough schedule and last night's win i mean with some wins that you get um you wouldn't think the yankees are a team that go, oh, that win a couple days ago 
Uh, that was huge. We're the Yankees. You're supposed to win yeah. those games. But they've got some huge games coming up that are going to be important for them in determining their success or not. I, I would say that that I agree with you. I think their pitching is more than capable of winning in the playoffs. And if they're along that line of thinking that we both are, then why not go add a bat? I, I don't understand why they didn't become buyers and do something then. I'm sure there were some things out there. Um, and maybe when you're talking about the Yankees, you're asking for more. And it's like a trickle-down effect. You start with the team that you could get the most out of, and then they say no, and you go to the next yeah. team and the next team, and then somebody eventually is willing to give up uh, – you know, at the deadline, they're like, oh, shoot, we, we got to get whatever we can now. I would love to know how that how that works, but I would think it works like I'm going after the big, the teams that have the biggest pieces and see how desperate they are. And if you find a desperate team, you get what you want. Um, but I think the Yankees are in a really, really difficult spot. Their, their roster uh, position player wise is a little less than athletic with the game that's played today. They're going to have to address some things. They've had some health issues, but they just now have got to rally around some of these young guys and, and, and get some better performances. And I think on average, they're going to because they went through a really bad stretch when Judge was out. John, when you look back at the trade deadline and what everybody did, who else out there do you think had a pretty good overall trade deadline? Yeah, I mean, there's some teams that uh, you go, wow. I mean, the Texas Rangers... Um, they they are they went for it. I mean, <laughs> my goodness, it, it is it is amazing to see what they were able to do uh, as a first place team, and then uh, checkmate Houston Astros. <laughs> it's like they went and got your brother, and and that to me is 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 all the adrenaline that team needed. You know, it's a it's a familiar face. It's it's obviously he's pitching great, and then right after the news, you get a no hitter by Valdez. So I think the, uh, the, the central kind of stole the show as far as uh, Texas went out and did what they had to do. And then Houston countered and uh, the so it's just ir ironic that both yeah. those players came from the same team. Um, they were teammates and now they're going at it again. John, always a blast, my friend. I appreciate you joining me. Have fun up in New York. Uh, my pleasure. Thanks. All right. See ya. All right, just wanted to again thank John Smoltz for joining me. Always a very fun conversation, but I couldn't stop thinking today about how he had to go to the airport, travel to New York for the Astros-Yankees series for a few days at minimum, and didn't think to bring his ID for any of that. So he ended up in the pickle that he ended up in, but ended up talking a lot about trade stuff, which was a lot of fun in the Mets situation and uh, it was interesting to hear him talk about the the Rangers Astros situation. How the Rangers just kept adding and adding and adding, and the cherry on top ended up being adding Max Scherzer, and then the Astros go checkmate by adding Justin to their rotation and being in a great position to to win that division. But always fun, always appreciative of John taking some time out of his day, and even on a day that he was traveling to New York and logistically trying to get to your hotel and all that stuff. Him being able to join me still is, is really cool. So I hope you all appreciate it because I know I do as well. But make sure you're subscribed anywhere you listen to your podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever. We're also on all social media, including YouTube, at Flippin' Bats Pod everywhere. But until next time, my friends, this has been another episode of Flippin' Bats. Peace.